Hi there. Natalie, Hi. how are you? Fine. Thanks for coming out today. No problem. Gorgeous day. Yes. Gosh. I tell you, the falls in New Mexico, aren't they? You oh, can't they beat are them. beautiful. You just cannot beat it, for sure. So, um, all right, so first things first, before we get started, could I get a good email for you so I could email you a summary of the lesson today? Okay. Okay. M. M. Dwyer. Okay. At att.net. Tell me, tell me a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your game, how long you've been playing, all that good stuff. Off and on, probably like 20 years or something, but okay. pretty much off, not a lot on. Not a lot. <laughs> okay, so what, do you get to play once so, a week, or how, how often are you getting to play then? Yeah, uh, for a long time I didn't play a lot, okay. so now I'm trying to get at least one, two times a week. That's great. I'm going to see if I can get that happening. And you're retired? Yes. What did you do when you worked? Um, computer programming. Okay. So. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, and you're, you said you're getting ready to go back to Florida. You're here just for a short time. And six you're, months. Yeah, okay. Six months there. Kind of get the best of, best of both worlds. Right. Yeah. We miss the winter here, which is okay. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, been playing for about 20. What, uh, what is your handicap? Know. It's like 47. It's 47. pretty high right now. Okay. What's the lowest? About 23, but that was probably 10, 15 years ago. Okay. And that's what do you attribute that? Then. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I was playing more regularly. Back then? Yeah. Right. So and when you I say more regularly, like more than twice Probably a week. like three times a week. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So a little so. bit less. A little bit less, but still, a couple times a week is probably more than yeah, <laughs> the true. average golfer. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, any physical limitations that we need to be aware of? No, no. aches or pains or anything other than just normal just age. stuff. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. I know. We're definitely not getting definitely not getting any younger. <laughs> um, do you get to work out? Do you um, walk? Mainly do you in New Mexico. Okay. I do. I don't okay. work out as much here. Okay. So when you're back, because I have a fitness person, oh, that I work in, out with over in Florida. Okay. In Florida. Okay. So not as much here now. No. Okay. So I have to, which is good. <laughs> well, I think yeah, when you have somebody there who's kind of holding you accountable, yeah, <laughs> that makes right. a big difference, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Did you ever play any other sports growing up, or no. nothing? Just golf. Oh, nothing remarkable. You know, it was all the non-athletic ones. Right. Okay. Well, I mean. Like, I Play a little tennis, but okay. my okay. doubles partner was great, so <laughs> you I could fall had, back. I just had yeah, to get it's a too good bad. Serve. Too bad we can't have a partner where we play golf all yes, the time. Huh? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that would make it much easier. So, <laughs> all right. Um, any other any other hobbies when you're not playing golf? Bridge. What do you like to do? That free yeah, bridge. bridge. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, that's one thing I've never have figured out how to play that. Yeah. But if there's a lot of people that do. <laughs> if you're into card games, you'd like it. If you're not. You know, we, we do play, um, my family, my, my in-laws play a lot of cards, um, uh -huh. but I don't think they're that, they're not card games, oh. they're, they're pretty easy, fast oh. card games, but I don't know if my brain could, uh, <laughs> could, if I could get my brain around the whole bridge thing, but anyway, maybe one of these days, so. Okay, so no injuries. Um, one right. of the things I w I'd like to do with my students before we get started is just do a little bit of stretching. Um, now, we're not taking full swings out here today, so it's okay. not... Um, the likelihood of injury is a lot less, but in any case, it's always good to do a little, little bit of stretching. Um, okay. So let me see here. I, I'm just going to grab one of my clubs, and I'm, I guess these are yours. Yes. Okay. So you've got a pitching wedge here. I pulled out the short ones. The short ones. Okay. Let me grab. You want a longer one? Got your wedge. No, this is good. This oh. is good. Okay. So I was just going to show you real quick a couple of the stretches that I like okay. to do. Um, one is really basic. It's just really the the golf swing, the shoulder turn. Warms up the spine, gets the shoulders loosened up, and really gets us ready for the motion, right? Okay. And then just a simple stretch. So stretch up in the air, just kind of oh. kind of pinch the shoulders back together, kind of opens up the chest a little bit. You probably feel some maybe some tightness under your armpits. I do anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I like to just do a little side bends. Huge deal for, mm. for 
first shorty game, but hip flexors, right, yeah. are an area that have a tendency to get tight in the golf swing. So if you just kind of flex over and then sit back just a little bit. Um, I always notice that I'm a little bit tighter for me on the left side. Yeah, good for the balance too. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Always do it with the club in your hand, for sure. <laughs> and then uh, I hold my tension in my neck, so always make sure I kind of hit that. We do a couple just gentle neck rolls. And I get a lot of cracking when I do this. Yes, I do. <laughs> you do too. <laughs> All right. Okay, feel good? Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, tell me a little bit about your goals. What, what do you, Have you set some goals for yourself specifically for, we'll talk maybe short term today, so like in the next half hour or so, and then maybe looking a little bit into the future and we, you know we picked short game to work on today that was that was your choice so I'm just wondering you know what is it that you would like to like to work on in today's lesson again it's a consistency okay in the swing and the contact okay consistency yeah. in the swing and contact okay They're kind of uh, yeah okay um, when you say consistency are you are you referring to just the, the solidness of the contact the hit, or is it the, are we talking more about where the, the ball's ending up? It's, I mean, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of the contact, okay. and it's kind of not getting it to the place I want to hit it to. Okay. So it's, it's so, so like the ball's maybe not being hit, struck squarely in the center of the face, and then the result is that it's not ending up close enough to the hole? And if I really okay. try hard, then I pull it. So. Okay, when you try hard, you pull it. Okay, yeah. so majority of your misses, if you do miss a shot, are going to be to the left? Okay, okay. Um, so thinking kind of maybe back um, on a couple of your re recent rounds, um, how many times were you able to get the ball on average, how many, on average, how many times can you get the ball up and down in a round? Because I'm assuming you're probably not hitting all the greens in regulation, oh, right? Yeah, for sure. So uh, how many greens, how many greens do you think you hit? Not very much. Not many? Okay. Um, so we have plenty of opportunities, right? Yeah. I mean, what oh, do you think? Sure. Maybe 16 or so I've opportunities to get up and oh, down yes. where we're chipping the ball or pitching the ball, something like this. And instead I don't. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so when you're thinking about all of those opportunities, how many times out of maybe, um, you know, an average round are you able to chip the ball close enough to the hole to, to, to make your putt in order to give yourself an opportunity? One or two. About one or two times. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, that's yeah, how everything so, seems to work. Okay, yeah. okay, so one or two times. Um, would you be happy if that were to double, triple? Oh. What, I mean, uh, I'd be you know. happy if I felt in control of it. Okay, okay. So, you know, if it's a little long, that's fine. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. Things like that. Okay, yeah. a little long, but giving yourself an opportunity to still make, to make the putt. Yeah. But I mean, are these shots to the extreme that you're having to, like, chip multiple times on a green, like you hit it and you go beyond the pin, beyond the green, and you're having to chip back to yeah, the pin at times? Yeah, that's usually 60 yards, 80 Okay, yards. so when you get up closer to the green, then. you do a little bit, mm -hmm. you're doing a little bit better. Okay, all right. Um, so that kind of gives me an idea. That It sounds like there's some room for improvement, <laughs> yes. right? We can always get better. Well, and you know, it could be something as simple as, as your setup, right? It could be just not having a good foundation, a solid foundation. I use a comparison a lot to the construction of a house, right? Your, mm. your foundation is what gives the house the stability. So in the golf swing, it's the setup, right? Uh -huh. So if your setup is off, whether you're talking full swing or putting or chipping, if that, full, if that setup is off, then you're gonna make some compensations, right? And it's gonna make it difficult for you to return that golf club uh, consistently. So um, those are some of the things I'll be looking at today. You know, I, I, I really stress the fundamentals and I'll, I'll take a look at all of your fundamentals today and make sure that there's nothing um, that really stands out. But um, I'd be willing to bet we might be making a little tweaks to your setup just kind of based on, on what you're saying. Mm. Um, so we'll, we'll take a look at that today. Do you know, um, kind of off the top of your head, um, just in, in, your, in your experiences um, in learning new tasks and things, do you, do you learn more audio? Are you more of an audio learner, more of a kinesthetic feel learner, or do you like to uh, be more of a visual? Do you like to see and replicate or um, have somebody model for you? More of a visual.
more of a feel. More of a feel player. Okay, so more of a kinesthetic. We call it kinesthetic, but oh. so you need to actually be able to to feel the motion um, in order for it to, to make sense and to transfer into into a change. Okay, okay, that's helpful. Um, so let's do this. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to have you hit about you know five shots or so for me. Okay. okay. I'm not going to say anything. I just want to kind of get a feel for what you do naturally. Okay. okay without um, without me telling you anything, and okay. then after you've hit those those five shots, I will give you a little bit of feedback, and we'll talk about uh, the plan for, you know, what we're going to do here in the next few minutes, and then um, kind of see what we can do, and okay. um, hopefully make some changes that you'll be happy with. Okay. Okay. So, um, it's your choice at this point which pin you want to aim for. We've got this blue flag here. Um, it's probably roughly 40 so from okay. us, um, it's probably closer to 25. Okay, so it's up to you. You have which golf club are you? Do you have in your hand there? Pitching the wedge. pitching wedge. Okay, and I, I noticed that you're hitting um, the tailor-made RBZs. I actually had that same set of golf right. clubs. So I like um, you yeah. like those? Yeah. And were you fit for them, or did you uh, just no, buy them I, off the rack? Right yeah. off um, the uh, tailor-made site. Off the tailor-made site. Okay. Okay, and they're just standard ladies, it looks mm -hmm. like, and they have a graphite shaft. Okay. Yes. All right, and then the rest of your clubs are all? Are all that except that for the same woods. Thing. Okay, except for the woods. And it looks like you've got a couple Callaway, you've got yeah. a Callaway driver and some steel heads. Um, okay. Yeah. All right, well, your irons are definitely much newer than, than your woods, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Obviously, we always like to encourage people to, to confirm that the clubs are hitting are actually fit for them that they're performing, you know, as, as well as they can for the student, but, yeah. um, you know, just at first class, it looks like they're probably fine. If you ever have an opportunity yeah. to go to a club fitting, it's mm -hmm. it would always be nice to go to a demo day where you could actually get fit and they could look at your clubs and say, okay, huh. these are the right, they're the right length, the right lie, all those things. Yeah. Um, and then if, you know, you can make some modifications to them really easy. Hmm. Um, so okay. if it needed to be adjusted in any way. So just something to keep in mind if the yeah. opportunity ever presents itself. So. So go right ahead. Um, which which uh, target are you going to aim for here? Well, I'll do the harder one, which is okay. further. The blue one? Okay. The blue one. Okay. And we'll see. All right. So we're going to set it up and, and do what you do naturally. Oh, sure. Oh, it doesn't usually go that <laughs> It almost hits the straight. first one in. <laughs> count the roll. <laughs> I like two of them. Like two of them. But they were too far. So right. The majority of them were too far. You have one that so. that the distance control was okay, mm -hmm. but you did pull it a little bit and you actually mm -hmm. hit the ground just a touch, if you mm -hmm. notice that. Yes, it okay. felt that way. Yeah. yeah. So um, and then the rest of them I wouldn't consider those bad shots in the mm -hmm. sense that the contact, I felt like the contact was fairly good. But it was um, too much. Yeah. But your distance control was a little bit off, right? So you right. could hit them out. You know, our greens may be a little bit faster than what you need to be. Um, but in any case, you know, it, it took a little bit of it took a little bit of time to adjust. Um, have you ever thought about your intermediate target? Do you pick out an intermediate target, something between you and your target, where you're trying to land the golf ball? For a while, I did. You did, and then I. <laughs> And then you forgot about it. So yes. do you think you're just um, kind of reacting to what you see there? Just kind of letting That's your okay. eyes tell you yes. what to do? Yes. Okay. And, and okay. it's not helping. So it should be really a spot. So, Closer. yeah. So you may have heard this before, but um, with a wedge, mm -hmm. it's traditionally about one-third carry and about two-thirds oh. roll the distance okay. between you and your target. Okay. So if we were, you know going to be not totally scientific about that, 
but we were just going to kind of eyeball a third of the distance. Um, I would think that would be somewhere, would you not agree, somewhere about in here wow. where you would want to land the ball to account for the fact that it's going to roll out. Now that's with your pitching wedge, right? Right. Um, is that what you would normally use for most of, you um, know, to that pen, to both of those pens? Nowadays, it's yeah, what I so would Yeah, so you're use. keeping kind of consistent with the, with the pitching wedge. Yeah. I mean, obviously, if you used a different club, a lesser locket club, then, mm. um, then you'd, go. you'd have to land, you'd have to land <laughs> short, right? Yes. So one of the things that I do, um, and I have my students do quite a bit, is I'll I'll actually put something down, um, whether it be, you know, you may not have one of these rings, oh, okay. but you probably have a towel, true, on your bag, right? right? So you could always use that. You could put a coin down, but something to get you focus on oh, where the golf ball needs to land, right? right. We get better at finding that that intermediate target. You're without a doubt going to get the ball closer to the hole, right? You get the ball closer to the hole. You know what the result's going to be, most likely, right? Good point. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's do this. Um, let's hit a couple shots and let's just let's just see if we can get that ball a little bit closer to that to that circle. Okay. Yeah. Now, what you'll want to do if you're doing this by yourself mm -hmm. and you're out practicing, you'll, you'll want to adjust that intermediate spot once you figure out exactly where it needs to be oh, okay right. so we're okay. just kind of um, at this point just give, doing an estimate of where we think it's going to be but that's um, so close you'll want to yeah you're going to want to yeah and, and, and we'll check it if it, i may not have put it exactly in the right spot adjust the circle, right? Because yeah. you flew it just... You flew it about three feet past it, right? Yeah. You flew it here? That's true. But just by changing your focus to finding that intermediate spot, look at our result. That's true. We did hit the ball to a foot compared to the other I am pretty sure you could make... <laughs> right? I'm pretty sure you can make <laughs> that one footer, right? Okay. All right. Boy. Okay. You're right. Just by focusing. Yes. Finding that intermediate spot is so important. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay, that's Never right. got up. That's okay. Get a couple more. Uh, okay, now don't be too upset with yourself. Wow. How far okay. did we hit that one? You're right, so if I'm anywhere Four feet? near if where you, I want to get. If we can get just a little bit closer to this spot, our result is going to be dramatically better. You've just wow. proven that. Hmm. <laughs> okay. okay. So we were a little bit short. Right. And the result is short. We were Way bit, short. We were a little bit short. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that was actually perfect in the spot. You landed it on the ring and it right. changed the spin, right? Right. Had that not happened, had you landed it just a little bit shorter or a little bit further, that would have been perfect. Yeah. Okay. You start holding back. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't try to don't try to help it, right? Okay. Just let the club do the work. We've just hit one, two, three, four, five, seven balls since we started to focus on our intermediate target, and they're all within 12 feet, and huh. five and of them are within, appears to me, about six feet. And they weren't over here so either, you go left. so right. it right. got you to focus on direction as well. Right, right. So part of the problem, I believe, was, you know, you, mm -hmm. you were taking the club awfully far back, uh -huh. you know, and so... I think what was happening when you hit it left, you know, you're, you're real long and then you actually have to slow down because your body's oh. just reacting, right? Your body's yeah. just reacting to the fact that you took the club back 
way back here for a shot that would probably end up, you know, about where it is, right? Okay. And so then you were having to slow down, and when you slow down, her truck gets crazy, and oh. you took it and hit it left. Oh. Okay, so that's why that was happening. Wow. Um, but I think it was just mainly primarily yeah. because you just didn't have a sense of where you needed to land the ball, right? Not bad. Not bad. It was just a little, was that one just a little bit thin? Yes. You felt just a little thin? Okay. Kind of ran. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Contact was off just a touch. Ah. <laughs> hmm. About four feet? Yeah. Okay. So I think what you need to work on and mm -hmm. to prepare yourself for in making these improvements, mm -hmm. um, I really think you need to. Find your drop point on yeah. every shot for a while, okay? Um, That's great. Now, when you're practicing, I, I encourage you to mix up your targets, okay? Don't uh -huh. hit your whole bucket to that one target, okay? Oh, okay. You pretty much have, so. You've pretty much mastered that shot, right? <laughs> so, you know, maybe three shots from oh, each really? location, okay. right? And then move on, right? So that you're not just solely focusing on that one shot. You're not going to oh. have that shot for, you're not going to have that same shot 18 holes, right? <laughs> you're going to, no. you know, so you would want to then, you know, go that, to then go to this one, right? And then again, now if you want to get really sophisticated, you can actually go and you can step it off, right? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine yards roughly. Okay. We divide that into thirds. Oh, so just three yards? One, two, three. Oh my gosh. Use your towel, wow. either a towel or a coin. Hmm. Um, I kind of like the towel, just for a visual. You know, these things are great too. You can buy these mm -hmm. on, I think it's called eBay or something like that. But, hmm. um, but they are great. And then, you know, work on work on it with your wedge okay. for a while. Um, if you feel like you want to then, you know, go down to maybe your eight iron hmm. or nine iron, you oh. know, for when okay. you have um, shots Perfect. at greater distance then do that, right? But remember, it's less loft, and so your drop point is going to be closer to, you know, right. one to four. The ratio is closer to one to four, so that means that wow. that drop point's even going to be closer to you, right? Yeah. So, you know, you want to keep that in mind as you're, as you're starting to, to work on that and experimenting with other clubs. And, and it may be that you just decide that, you know what, the wedge is working really good and just use that for the majority <laughs> of your shots. Yeah, I mean, for, for most shots, I think the wedge will work. Mm -hmm. You know, you may... If you had a situation where the pin was, you know, real close, maybe here, then maybe you grab your sand wedge, right? Just because you don't have a whole lot of green to work with, right? True. The sand wedge here, you could just, you know, pitch it up, it get it on the green, and then let it release. Where the wedge might be a little difficult because you'd have to fly it so, so much further, right? And then it might be hard, yeah. Huh. But, um, you know, experiment with the different clubs. And the other thing I, I do encourage my students to do if you're, if you think you're ready to go and, you know, and tackle those different um lofts and so forth is maybe hit one shot with each club. Maybe you grab your sand wedge, maybe you hit your, your wow. pitching wedge, and maybe you hit your eight to oh. each pin. It really teaches you a lot about the loft, wow. right? And what yes. the different clubs are designed to do and what you can do around the green. Sorry, this is a loft, but oh. <laughs> trying to get it. Um, but anyway, I would, like I said, I would I would really work hard on, on this part of your game because it yeah. sounds like you've been losing some shots around the greens. Yeah. Uh, without a doubt. And here you are, you know, so you can't say I lose my club head speed. Yeah. No. Know? Yeah, so no. Your, really your your setup was good. We didn't even have to address that. Mm. Right? It was just um, like I said, you're just at first glance you were just you're just real long, right? <laughs> and then you were having to slow down, right? Mm. Instead of just keeping keeping that motion mm. constant. But then, you know, if you just know where you want to land it, your body's gonna react. You're a kinesthetic learner, yeah. right? You're a field, field player. So as long as you see that spot and you know that spot, you're going to react to it, right? You're going to react to that spot. A lot of times I think we focus on the, the pin so much that, yes. <laughs> you know, it's you like, but the odds of us flying it into the pin from here to the <laughs> hole, it, I don't know what it is, but, you know, we could probably just sit here all day and actually try, you know, yeah, trying right. to fly it in there, right? But, you know, our goal, right, is just to get it Within, good. What, 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 how, how close right. do you want to hit that ball? Right. 
three feet, four feet. I mean, you just proved that you could, yeah. you could do it, and we hit, you know, just all of what here. twelve balls or so, yeah. right? So just think if you come out and spend a little bit more time on it, you are going to have so much success. It's going to be. Yeah. I bet that handicap drops. Yeah, cause they're saying for short hitters, you've got to have a good short hand. And right to now, make up for it. Yeah. yeah. All right, so Great. I will email you a summary, and Great. there won't be a whole lot in it, but <laughs> this you is know, good. I think you know yeah. now what you need to work on, and um, hopefully we can revisit this, and you'll be able to come back and tell me, you know what, my up and down percentage is now double what sure. it was, right? Not 10%, exactly. 10 to 20, but maybe, you know, 30 to 40%, maybe 50. So I'll be anxious to hear how that's going. So stay in touch with me. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you <laughs> so much. Thank so good you. to see you and, and have a good, uh, safe trip back to Florida. Yeah, thank you, Dennis. Okay, thank you. I'm encouraged, so.